done here. So that's what we're going to carve. Okay. There. I can remove a little bit. I will show you how is the transition from a block here. First, we have a block. And what we do, we cut the block following the outline of the blank. And we have the blank cut. And, and then we shape the blank. And finally, we uh, have the bird. So those are the four stages that we follow from a block to the final. I have one example here, but I, I, I also blew a magnet. So you put a magnet and then you can stick in your fridge. Uh, I would like to know how many of you have the prepare blank for carving the bird. It's have you tried to prepare this blank? Yeah, I got mine done. Okay, so from now on, I'm going to follow a, a plan that I have sent you, and I will be doing a step by step, and I will talk about five minutes, and then I will give you time enough for you to complete the task, and we'll keep, we will keep going. The first task is the roughly round of the body. So if we take, I need always a glove, a glove is a very good protection and it's a small investment for the safety that it provides. And uh, thumb guard. Thumb guard could be just a piece of a glove or just a knife. This is a normal knife, it's a detailed knife manufactured by Drake. It's a Drake knife that has a one and a quarter inch blade. The handle is ergonomic. And I use a bit tool. This is a fail Swiss made V2, 45 degrees, two millimeters. But any V2 can be fine. Those are basically the tools that we're going to use. So we will start right now. The first thing is roughly round the body. And in order to do that, I'm going to take the knife and start cutting first the breast. Just roughing. Uh, I suggest you to just walk, uh, watch what I'm doing because I will give you enough time to do that. But basically what I'm doing is I'm cutting the edge of the breast. Then I'll now go and cut the belly. In this case, I'm using a different cut. When I was here, I was using what is called the levering cut. You create the levering effect by pivoting the knife on the, the thumb. And now I'm pushing the knife in the direction of my thumb. As I explained in the document that I send you, as soon as I start rounding, I have to join the two views of the grooves. And
carve again the group. These are the belly groups. Come in here. Okay, and I continue. Uh, uh, I, can, I can do it. Step by finish on the phone power. Is it one of the uh, You know how to change the internet? There's an internet. Okay, change. I form the two groups in the belly. Yeah. And now I go to I the. There's a word. And I'm going to first round the mantle. The mantle is here on top. And I join here. And finally, the wing, same thing, start rounding. The only difference that is that as I'm rounding the wing, now I have to narrow the flank of the bird because so I have to enter here without touching the tail, I start narrowing. And I will restore my or merge my group, my groups here. Okay, so I have roughly rounded the breast, belly, mantle, and the uh, wing. Uh, let's carve for 10 minutes. You have 10 minutes to try to do that. I'm going to put this here. But basically what we I have done is rounded the four edges of the body of the bird. Okay. So let's see what we can do in 10 minutes. I will continue rounding more. Here I rounding more the chest. The belly. Gradually, the groups will merge until we have only one group, because what we have first is two views of the group. I don't, at this moment, I don't touch the tail. The tail should stay the way it is until we 
more or less complete the rough carving of the wings of the wing. Again, I can do more work around in the chest. And the belly. I can also use the layering cut on the belly and restore the groove. I have to start reducing the flank don't need to reduce too much and just give some space so There's still a lot of time, so we can continue doing this rounding.
we have still five minutes, so plenty of time to round the body. It's just rough rounding, so don't worry if it's not complete. We don't intend to, we will leave this, some flat section here. We'll complete at the end. I'm going to show you the belly. There's too much light here. Okay, so at this point, we're going to carve the tail. I'm going to carve five minutes, and then you will have five more minutes to carve the tail, which give us 10 minutes to carve the tail. In order to carve the tail, there's five task or five steps. The step number one is to chop the fibers of the back of the wing. We take 
the knife and we just do a stop cuts following the back of the wing. I'm doing this because when we carve the tail, there's the possibility that the cuts may start cutting the wing. So it's better to have stop cuts here. Number two, just rough cut the tail. It's important to take a look. You can see more or less in this a uh, V shape of transition between the wing, the belly, and the tail. The little V. And we need to. In, in the paper that I sent you, I more or less explained the direction of the cuts to have always with the grain cuts. So now I'm doing the rough carving, following the group that was carved in advance. So it's just. Uh, to curb this bear, we don't need a pencil because everything has been marked with the groups. By now I'm just reducing the width of the tail until I reach the position of the groups. As I'm carrying the tail, it's a good idea to reinforce the grooves that separate the tail from the wing. I'm still seeing the, the letter V, which is the inter the connection between the tail, the the wing and the belly. At the same time, I um, have now the possibility of narrowing more the flank. The third step is to taper the edges of the wing because the wing is su supposed to be very flat. But it's not a good, a good idea to have a too thin wing uh, tail because it could be a little bit weak. Uh, and at the same time, but before that, I have to round the two edges of the tail. Following the two grooves that are in the drawings. And now I can start first cleaning the tail because of the specific position of this tail, one side is cut in the opposite direction of the other side. I mean, top and bottom sides of the tail. But, okay, now that I have the tail roughly shaped, I do the tapering, which is going to provide a very thin edge on both sides. I'm working on the back and here's the top. The, the cut directions are the opposite. Uh, in this direction. Mm -hmm. 
We also taper the side, the, the back of the tail. So more or less, this is the tail. So I'm going to give you five more minutes so you can carve the tail. I'm going to put it this here. There. There is more work to narrow the flank. It's always a good idea to keep uh, rounding the body. And to recover in the groove. Yeah. Okay, so this is where we are. Uh, let's see if there's any, any. Rick, are you still carving? Rick and John, are you still carving? Am I still carving? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because carving. you are an expert on birds. So. Hey? You are an expert carving birds. Yeah, well, I don't know if I'd say I'm an expert or not, but give me two minutes, I'll show you what I just finished. Okay, what you have is that's a, uh, oh, that's a blue bird. Yeah, a blue bird. Nice. Yeah, that one. Nice, Rick. 
That's a cardinal male. Yeah. The female is completely different. This is one here I just... Have you carved also a female uh, cardinal? No, it's a little owl. Oh, it's an owl, yeah. Yeah, it's just, that's one of my own design. I sketched that all out. Yeah, that's... Believe me, the artwork is terrible, but the bird turned out not too bad. I carved the feet on uh -huh. it. Just something to do. Yeah. Very nice, very nice. Okay, so... Uh... Uh, are you going fine with the body and the tail? Need more time? The grooves, I, I put grooves because they help to, they separate the parts of the bird. This light is Okay, the, the next step is to carve a little bit the shoulder. The shoulder is uh, a little bit uh, square, so we have to round the shoulder and to, at the same time, to round a little bit the breast and the mantle and to carve the grooves that are there before we lose those grooves. There's one groove, so there's not too much work to do on this shoulder, but anyway, it's, let me see, okay. Um... Okay, I'm going to start rounding the shoulder, but at the same time, I have to recover the grooves. There's a groove that comes from the throat and goes Like that. And at the same time, there's a groove that goes to the nape. And by rounding the shoulder, we'll see that the grooves have more. Continuity. It's always a good idea to keep rounding gradually until the grooves reach their position. I don't know if you can see the grooves there. 
There's some grooves here. It's not that clear. There, there, there are the grooves of the shoulder. After five minutes, we will start rounding the head. We have spent half an hour, so we have enough time. The head is a little bit uh, more delicate because the size is smaller, but besides that, it's the same technique. You can see that the eye is not still not drawn in, in the blank, just the cavity of the eye. The eye will be carved inside the cavity. And also you have some lines that show the grooves of the cheek. Also, uh, birds don't have cheeks. They don't need them. But we used to call we call them uh, grooves or cheek grooves. They are not really grooves. Ah, sorry, cheeks. I still have a very nice knife from you. Look this. Your name is here. Rick and John. I, 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 it was um, Search that sold me this knife. Very good. Okay, uh, we're going to roughly round the head and then we're going to stop and we're going to have a little bit of a coffee break. Uh, the head needs to be rounded on top and bottom. Rounding the head on the top is very easy because there is nothing there, it's just wood. But rounding the bottom is dangerous because you can erase the marks that you already drew in the throat and under the eye. So we need to protect those marks. That's why I use any compass or any owl so I push a little bit 
uh, a tiny hole and put some ink there. So when I remove the wood, the hole is still there. That way I can recover the position of the main lines that were drawn in the bottom of the head. So first we're going to round the top of the head. That's what I'm going to do now. Rounding the top of the head is pretty simple but has to be done with the grain. You cannot round the head against the grain because the wool will break. So there's one drawing in the paper that shows the direction that we have to follow to round the top of the head. More or less says from the center forward will be forwards. I hit this, I'm rounding the, but front of the top of the head and in the back is going to be in the opposite direction. Pretty simple. doesn't need to be completely rounded. Put this in a better position, you can see. There. Mm. Mm -hmm. Autofocus of the camera. There, I'll run in on, we have, let's have five minutes to round the top of the head. At this point of time, I would like to see how are we going. If anybody has some input of how it's going, are we going too fast, too slow, or is it clear? We'll continue in 10 minutes. So if any, if is there any question, we can talk gladly about it. Curling's over, Brian. <laughs> yeah, I heard we're 
We're out of it, eh? Yeah. Closed her down for another year. Yeah. <laughs> this red zone did it. Yeah. Did you curl on Monday? Yes, I did Monday and Wednesday. Yeah, you did Monday and Wednesday. Yeah, I didn't get too much out of it this year. Did you hear, Bob, did you hear any more about uh, Chuck Ross? How's he doing? Well, he's not doing too bad. He's, uh, the arthritis medication, they took him off of it because that was the problem with his uh, system. Right. I was telling Andy about Bill Wilton calling me and He's been laid up with uh, with I kind of forget the name polymyelitis uh, rheumatoid sort of rheumatic. Anyways, it's a long word I can't even pronounce it. <laughs> <laughs> but he said he's getting over it. He's getting back to his sugar bushing and. Uh, he, if anybody wants wood, he's still in the, you can phone him up or get some. I'd have to do that. He's sure got, he's sure got a nice spot out there in the country, I'll tell you. Beautiful. Has he got a mill or something? <laughs> He's got enough equipment to sink a battleship. He can do anything for you, any, any length of wood you want, just about. He's got a huge planer. He's 87 years old, so he's probably had a shot and everything. Oh. <laughs> he doesn't look his age. No, and he does so much work. But he had Lyme disease before he got this. <laughs> he's been, it's been rough on him. I'm going to be glad when we are able to get together in person again. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, this, sure. this works all right, but, you know, it's a, it's a pale, pales in comparison to live get togethers. That's for sure. And, and we seem to have a lot of people who aren't particularly comfortable with this format. Uh, yeah, I'm surprised know. at how many there are that 
can't do it. Yeah, they seem to think it's complicated where it really isn't. Well, it's funny, my daughter is having a, sh a baby shower because she's expecting. And uh, she was having a Zoom party, but we thought a lot of the younger crew would be able to do the Zoom party, but yeah. which one? What'll this be, number four? Yeah, this is my fourth, yeah. Yeah, number four. Two boys and two that's girls. A good, that's a good number because that's where my kids quit at four. Well, they're so they're so old having their babies these days. Uh, you can't go much later than that anymore. Well, that's it. Uh, you know, my girls were close to forty before they started and your girls I think were both at least in their 30s weren't they yeah well this one the one that's having the one right now is uh, 41 so yeah 42 I got my keyboards full of wood chips here <laughs> mm -hmm. oh well I've been doing lots of zooming, but I have to confess, this is the first time I picked up a knife. <laughs> oh, is it? And the only knife I could find that was at all sharp was my chip carving knife. So I'm I'm working on a project that John did in one of the clutches for us. <laughs> so, but it feels good actually. Do you remember these little tags? Oh, yeah, sure. I can't remember if they were supposed to be Christmas ornaments or key tags. Uh, well, they were originally my idea was they would be the label for your Christmas presents. Oh, yes, that's right. Yeah. Two Christmases ago. Okay. Oh, it's longer ago than that be. Uh, Maybe three. I, oh, yeah, I, because you were here. Yeah, it's like five years ago I did those. And I did, <laughs> uh, I did about 40. And... Uh, and and gave them to all the family members. Well, I thought they'd use them over and over again. Well, they didn't. They all hung them on their trees. <laughs> so they're on a present for one year, and then they're an ornament after that. Because, you know, I dressed them up. I had um, holly on some of them and, uh, and, and variety of things. And on the back, for all the little kids, I would wood burn and then paint something. Like one boy was crazy about front end loaders at the time he was about <laughs> two, so I put a front end loader on there and if I put a tractor trailer uh, on the back of another one with the little boy's name on the uh, trailer and, and so on that was kind of fun oh that sounds so cool oh yeah, yeah. okay now we're going to start the second part which is carving the head oh the part. slave driver's back yeah okay <laughs> Okay. He gave us a coffee break, but I didn't have a coffee yet. I might have. Ha if I ha if I check out early, it's it's nothing personal. It's just what's going on here. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, but I'm glad. It was so good. To, uh, let me say, it's just so good to see all you guys and just actually to pick up a knife finally after a year, I guess. I nice see you too, B. Yeah, yeah, good to see you too. Yeah, so I'm going to stick around until things get um, iffy here, and then I'll just be gone. <laughs> okay. So you have a good uh, good week. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be a good week. It'll feel so good to get that shot. Yeah. Into him. Yeah. Well, I'm sure that uh, you know. Hopefully, it'll go okay. I don't know anybody yeah. that's had a. a adverse reaction yet no no, no my, my mom is uh, 94 and uh, she had both of them and nothing that's awesome yeah, yeah and my uh, friend of mine her mom's 96 I think and she mm -hmm. had both and nothing excellent yeah so it's uh, it's all good yeah, yeah. we're, we're got pretty good about shots I won't get mine until a couple of weeks from now but it's really good to have Fred get his because he has no spleen ah uh, okay now i'm going to show you how to carve the head the, the first thing is we need 
to preserve the lines that we drawn, these lines. These lines need to be preserved. So what I do is I make some tiny holes with this owl <laughs> in the points that are marked on the pages that, pages that I gave you. <laughs> so I make tiny holes here. So when I carve this section, I don't lose the position of the lines. Once I made the holes, I put a, a marker and put some ink there. So when I start carving the throat, for example, I can still see the tiny holes here. The idea is to carve the front of, of the head. And before I lose more of those points, I do it again. I use my pen, my fine point marker. Mm. That's fine. Let me show you. So what I have done is to curve the throat, but I still keep the points that mark the lines that were there. Now I'm going to curve the forehead groove. The forehead groove separates the beak from the head or from the forehead. In order to do that, first has to be done with a knife because carving a groove with a V tool in the head may be a little bit too invasive. So the idea is to, to do first a stop cut here And then do two small cuts from one side and from the other. Until the groove is formed. The groove has <clears throat> a little entrance on the other side. There, here is the groove. The groove that separates the beak from the forehead. And I'll give you five minutes to finish this, and then we will carve the bill.
after the bill, we cut the eyes and that's it. So basically we have two more tasks. Carving the bill and carving the eyes. There should be one, there was a line here. I won't complete. Okay, now we're going to carve the bill. Carving the bill, it's not that complicated. It's, the idea is to carve the bill separated from the head. So I don't carve the bill as a continuation of the head, but separated. Once I have carved the bill, I create a transition between the head and the bill, and that's it. So as always, the first step to carve the bill is to carve a stop cuts. So I do a stop cuts here. These stop cuts are shown in a graph in the papers that I gave. After the stop cuts, I do some deep cuts to remove part of the bill. Just up to the 
stop cat. There is no problem if we lose the line that separates the bill in two because that's very easily, can be very easily done. Uh, what I have done is to curve the bill by going deep into the wood. You can see here the wood that I have removed. What I have done is narrow the bill especially in the part that is close to the head. And now I'm going to cut the transitions from the face to the bill. And finally, here I think it's convenient to reinforce the, the transition with uh, groups and a V tool should be fine. There. Mm -hmm. Created the transitions from the forehead to the view. Before we go to the carving the bill, shaping the bill, there's one group that we haven't put here, which is the throat. There is a throat bill here, a uh, group, which more or less has this shape. So we can carve a small groove here. Mm. This groove goes up to the shoulder. It's still not clear, but. Mm -hmm.
You can see the groove, which is a throat groove. And now we're ready to carve the bill. In order to carve the bill, we need to follow the directions of with the grain cuts that are in the drawings that I gave. So that's not that critical, but you should consult the dimensions of the drawings. The drawings have scales. They are 0.5 inches per square. So you can know exactly the size of the Bill, but let's just by now start carving. There is something called underbill covers, which is a section of tiny feathers underneath the bottom of the bill. So we put those just with a small group here. The bottom of the bill is carved from outside towards the bird. Otherwise, you will be cutting against the grain. But the top has to be carved from the body out, outwards. I can reinforce the, the group, the forehead group. It's coming. Okay, so we're gonna have start, have started. Uh, Robin, I think it's Robin. Yeah, it's an American Robin. I don't know what it's going to do for paint, but so how did your shopping go? It never got there because I brought her the stuff, and then I she Sharon was there, and so she wanted to see um, I can't. how to do it. Mm -hmm. How many is there there? Oh, uh, we got. Uh, Okay. Oh, I got ten. One just left. Huh. Did you bring the dog in? No. He's out there somewhere. Him. 
He didn't come to see me. Well, then he's off the property. It's always a good idea to continually adjusting the shape and carving. I take a collar, draw back his dish. Hey? Why? I say collar must have brought back his dish. I was upstairs, the dog was outside, and that's how the dog got in. Yeah, I In order to separate the bill in, in two mandibles, uh, the best way to do is, is using the knife first because the knife can cleanly separate the wood. If you use a V tool, there is an issue. It will cut perfectly one side, but it will crush the other, no matter which direction you use. So it is recommended to use a knife to separate the bill first. Just doing a tiny groove and then reinforce it, enlarge it. With oh, I see you. Rita? So that's what I'm going to do. First, I do a stop cut, just tiny one. Uh, I'm going to put some light here because I'm, I need extra light. Sorry for that. He's laying down right here. Hey? He's laying right beside the window. Oh. Right there. Well, you didn't hear me then. Hello, Rita. Hello. Did you hear all that? Of course we did. Oh, oh. <laughs> I, I better not talk about you then. That's all right. No, I've, I was... heard it all, I've heard it all before. We were, <laughs> we were just looking for the dog. <laughs> so we, got, we got coyotes out here. Yeah, eh? And your dog's not big enough to eat the coyotes? Well, he's 90 pounds, but he's getting pretty old and feeble. Okay. The big Airedale we used to have, he'd kill him. Yeah. I had a 90 pound Airedale. Nothing got by that guy. When I had my big dog, who was 120 pounds, the only time uh, we ever saw a coyote, it took one look at my dog and just ran. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but they gang up, eh? They come in yeah. on twos, twos or threes. I know out here in Greeley, they killed quite a few even German shepherds. Well. And that crazy member of parliament says, or our Counselor, she was saying the other day that they were harmless, right? Eh? Yeah. Uh, yeah I, I carve a small groove to separate the, the bill. It's looking pretty good, Jose. It's going, huh? <laughs> it's getting there. 
the, okay, now comes the critical point, the eye. So in order to show you how to cut the eye, I will use a bigger size of uh, a piece of wood where I will explain how to carve the eye. That's the last point, and it's important because the eye gives expression to the bird. So what I did is I prepared a piece of wood, this, and I draw an eye which is twice the scale of the real eye, it's twice. Uh, that way you can see how I do it in a more comfortable way. In order to do that, I'm going to follow, uh, let me see, six steps. But we can reduce to five, five steps. So let's start the eye. First, we have to draw the center of the eye because we don't have here the eye, we just have a cavity. So we draw, doesn't have to be a, a perfect, just a small circle. And then you have to find a gouge that matches the circle of the eye. Normally for the real birds, for the real size, I use this, which is a dockyard four millimeters gouge because the eye has four millimeters. In this case, I found a gouge which is uh, more or less eight millimeters. And with this, which is this one, I bought it from search and I replaced the handle. I put a bigger handle. When I bought the gouge had a small handle, so I increased the size of the handle. And then I glue it and it's fine. I'm going to use the gouge to do stop cuts all around the eye, that circle in the center. If I have, let, let's assume the wood is here, okay? There. If I push the gouge with the shaft perpendicular to the to the wood to the surface, it will destroy the eye because if you take a look, the there's an angle. The cutting bevel has an angle. So if I push in this direction, what I'm doing is I'm forcing the gouge to do in a direction which in, will invade the eye. So a proper push cut has to be done more or less at this angle. Cannot be used perpendicular, has mm. to be at angle. So, and I start first, as how I wrote in the papers, first is across the grain. Now I'm putting a stop cut across the grain on the other side. And then along the grain. Along the grain means along the fibers. I have done three, and this is the fourth push cut the or stop cut and the surface of the eye. I have covered more or less 360 degrees. Step number two. Well, number three, because number two was the stop cuts. The step number three is to cut triangular chips in the cavity. I am going to cut four triangular chips. Here is one. 
to three and four. And I use a knife to cut this triangular chips. That's very simple. Uh, everybody can do that. You are an expert in that. The first cut is a vertical stop cut along the axis of the eye. The second one is a horizontal cut. And the third cut is a diagonal cut that complements and forms a triangle. So a chip is removed. Okay, let's see if you can see. This is very important. You have to understand how I remove a triangular. Can you see the triangular cut? It's, I have removed one chip and then, and then I complete this cut on the other three sides. The first cut has been done already for the first of these two chips. So I need to do the second and the third one. There. And the other side. Sorry. Okay, I have cut four triangular chips. And the fourth task or step is to round the cavity now. In order to round the cavity, I have to follow the directions that are also in the pages. Uh, by the way, you can always check these papers. This is a step number 24 that we're going to do, which is around the cavities. And we have to follow the directions. If you don't do, it's okay. If, if, well, you may think that's okay if you follow a different uh, direction, but when you paint, the surface will be too porous and the quality of the eye will diminish if you cut against the grain. So it's always a good idea to cut with the grain, the eyes. I want to cut basically I'm, I'm rounding what I cut already.
Okay. Let me see if I can take out here. The reason why I use this tripod is because the autofocus is not that stable, so it requires some stable position to work properly. And the last step is to round the eye. In order to round the eye, I just recommend to round the edges of a cylinder. It's not a half a sphere. If you round too much, the eye size diminish. It will be too small. So all you need to do is to round the edges of this uh, small cylinder following the direction shown on step number 25, which is round the eye. The round in the eye has to be done absolutely with the grain. If you do against the grain, you break the eye. And then you probably will not understand what happened. But it's simply that you didn't cut with the grain. I'm going, it requires uh, six cuts. They are explained in the, in the papers. Always start with the grain. Here. Now the other side. And finally, this one. One thing that helps is just uh, any brush that then we'll do along the grain some round along the grain. And finally, across the grain. Always with the grain, never against the grain because the eye breaks. Okay, so this is the eye. Pretty simple. There's nothing sophisticated about this. You can clean a little bit.
Okay, and that's basically it. Uh, I recommend you to first try a small scrap of wood until you are happy with the eye and then you carve the eye. Once you have the eye, you have to complete with a group on, on the, the chicks group. After that, the last step is I call final carving. Final carving is for you complete the rounding because the round now is not complete. Once your round is completed, that's what you should have. That should be your objective. You want to see I have two here. Yeah, there could be some tiny differences between one and another, but basically that's it. Let's go back to our Uh, so uh, that was the idea. The idea was to show a simple way of carrying a robin and I think we have another session in which we are going to paint. Painting is as important as carving. A good paint will enhance your carving. A bad paint will destroy all the work you have done carving. So painting should be as taken as serious as carving. Fortunately, you don't need too much to paint. We use acrylics, which are very cheap. And uh, I will send in advance the guys for painting. So in our next session, I think uh, probably a couple of weeks, uh, we will have first, I will do an overview of how I paint, and then you will paint your, your carving. There's no need to expensive brushes or oils or pretty, very simple. It's very, very simple. One thing too, uh, for the eyes, if you just paint the eyes and they make them look like they're glass, just a, a few drops of uh, clear women's nail polish on the top and they'll come out looking just like glass. Yeah, that could be uh, interesting eh, to, to do it. Uh. Yeah, like last month, whatever the guy was doing his cats, he had the eyes already carved in there. All he had to do was paint them the right color, then put clear nail polish on top of them. Okay. And he was finished. There, if you are afraid of carving the eyes, if you think it's just paint the eyes, yeah? or drill a hole and insert an eye, there are many options, many options. Yeah, I, I like the idea of carving a solid piece of wood. You do everything in one piece of wood. That will, uh, maybe that's called a purist, but carving everything in one piece is more attractive. I'll give you more crowd. I'll get to something to show you one piece of wood. Okay. Gotta go all the way out to the back. There you are. 
the book. Oh, well, that's a different dimension. Huh? Whole group, that's all one. I don't know. It's not on the screen. I guess yeah. you can see it. We can yeah. See it. yeah. We can see it, Rick. And you can see it? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I, last fall, I had a guy here and he offered me $2,500 for that piece. $2,500. Twenty-five, and I, I said no thanks. Oh my God! Uh, I don't need the money. <laughs> I was thinking about that piece for about fifteen years before I did it. Wow! Even the shoelaces are wood, eh? Yeah. They're the inside bark of a cedar tree. Yeah. Or I guess maybe. Okay, so. Uh, Very nice, Rick. Very really nice, nice, buddy. Size 11. We're closing now on. Andy, you're programming a second session, right? Yeah, we'll get the uh, second. We'll do it in the middle of April. Yeah, okay. 16th of April. I, know, I double check here. So. Right, six, 16th of April. The middle, yeah. Right, because on the 7th, we're going to have a general meeting. So the week after, we'll do. Right. Do that. So, so we will uh, paint the province and I tell you nothing special, just simple, simple and keep it simple. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. That was a good session, uh, Jose. Yeah, that was very all, good, Jose. All, all okay. Good. I hope you enjoy the. I know it's not session. easy. All this stuff organized and. and uh, uh, I see you. Uh, Brian is showing me uh, very nice. <laughs> oh my God, that's good job, Jose. Very nice. Okay, so it has been a pleasure to show us a little bit and enjoy the, the good weather. <laughs> enjoy the sunshine. Yeah, it's going to yeah. be. And get the vaccine as soon as you can. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm 25 okay. and over. <laughs> bye bye. Okay. Thank you very much and see you around. Thanks. Bye. See you, everybody. Bye Have a good week. Thank you, Jose. Andy, Bye. Andy, Thanks, Jose. before you go, Andy. What? Uh, before you go, Andy. Yeah. Uh, if you ever want, uh, I'd be uh, happy to help you uh, with sharp, showing you how to sharpen your lathe tools. Yeah, I'm not, well, yeah, it's just, I just haven't, I haven't started even you know, get at it. I know I've got to learn that part first. I'll see how I go if it's, I've watched uh, or I've tried a few times and then I, I sort of stopped because I had too many other things going on here. Yeah. And well. I, he showed me a bit before when he gave me the, or. Okay. When we were there. So uh, I don't feel too bad about trying to sharp, you know, sharpen them up a bit. They're, yeah. they're fairly good to start with, so. All right. It's me keeping them sharp. Not, thank goodness I don't have to start from scratch. So, yeah, yeah. Thanks, John. Sure. I'll pleasure. let you know if I get into trouble. Yeah.